Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So nice to have you here. Today I have a special treat for you. We're going to be shooting this product photography shot using just a single light. So I took the day off today from my regular work and I was sitting at home thinking how to best utilize this time. Now I thought, let's start with just clearing out some stuff from my wardrobe, which has started to look a little bit messy for this, the last few months. And I found this little gem. Now this happens to be a bottle of perfume that I received over a year ago for my birthday. And I've never actually used it, but it looks amazing. It's the One Million Privé, or however you say it, I'm not sure, by uh, Paco Rabanne. So today we're going to be shooting this guy, this little gem of a bottle. Looks pretty neat. Um, using just one light, and I'm going to go through the setup with you guys right now. So today I'll be shooting on my Canon EOS RP camera, which is a full-frame sensor. And I'm going to be using the Tamron 90mm f2.8 macro lens for this. So we're going to be zooming in quite close to the bottle. For the flash, I'm going to be using my Godox 8200 Pro. Now I've gone ahead and put some electrical tape as you can see, and that just helps me to recognize and identify the uh, flash that I'm using. Now to trigger the 8200 Pro, I'm using the Godox X2T trigger for Canon. So on the 8200 Pro, I'm going to be using this softbox, which attaches quite neatly using this bayonet adapter. And the idea is to create a series of shots with the light positioned in different angles around the subject to create different accents of light on the subject. I'm going to be using a tripod for this series of shots just to ensure that the composition stays exactly the same across all the shots. And then we put it all together in Photoshop. All right, let's have a look at the setup. Okay, so I've gone ahead and connected up my camera to a tripod and it's set at a very low angle and it's basically pointing up towards the, uh, the bottle of perfume here. And I'm gonna be using this 8200 Pro as we saw before with this little softbox attachment. We're gonna do some, well, we're gonna do multiple shots around the bottle of perfume over here. And uh, we're gonna try and accent different parts of the bottle. I've gone ahead and put it on a wooden, uh, cheese board I believe. It's a circular cheese board. It's going to create a nice shape at the bottom of our frame. And as you can see, I found this table and chair lying in my house and I've just used it to raise the, uh, the bottle of perfume and the whole set essentially. Let's have a look at the composition here. I'm going to switch on the screen on the, on the camera for you to get a better view. And this is basically what our composition looks like. Now, if I were to just hide all the information, I should make it a bit clearer. Now, I have set my lens to manual focus so that it doesn't move around trying to hunt for focus while in autofocus mode. And also on the camera, I've set up focus indicators. So where you can see those red lines is basically where the uh, focus is sharpest. So on the Canon EOS RP, there's a Wi-Fi function. So I'm using my smartphone to trigger the camera. But what you could do is if you had a remote trigger, uh, maybe an infrared blaster, or rather the infrared remote that comes with various cameras, uh, I believe you can purchase it separately. It doesn't come with the cameras. But for my purpose, the Wi-Fi function works really well because I can trigger my flash and the frame all in one go by just clicking once like that. You'll probably see it flashing as I'm taking frames. So the first thing to do is to create what's called a black frame. So what we're gonna do is switch off the flash. So I'll, I can just do that by switching off the trigger here. And you have to set the camera to settings where all the ambient light gets cut out. So on my camera, I've set it at uh, 1 200th of a second, which is our flash sync speed. Um, you can look up flash sync speed. There's hundreds of tutorials and hundreds of informational videos on YouTube. Uh, the aperture is set to f9 and the ISO is set at the lowest possible, which is 100. That's to cut out any 
digital noise in our, sh in our shot. It also helps to cut out the ambient light. So when I take a shot with that, with that setup, what we see is a black frame. So it's essentially cutting out all the ambient light. And now we can start introducing the flash. So I've got my flash here. I'm going to enable the trigger now. And if I just do a test shot, okay, that's flashing, it's great. And now we can start shaping the light. We can start shaping the light around the subject. So you'll see me just walking around and taking various shots just to try and accent different parts of the, of the bottle. I'm being very careful not to be in the shot, obviously. So I've just realized my flash is actually not bright enough. So I'm going to change the uh, flash settings in here, in the trigger, to something that's a bit more appropriate. So I'm gonna actually go full power on the flash. Now remember with the softbox attachment in front, the light does get cut out. So turning it over to the full power of the flash should help. So that's me just throwing a bit of light on the background just to have a, a nice silhouette of the, of the bottle. And we can use that in Photoshop later to maybe create a selection or a mask around the bottle. So I'm actually moving it a little bit closer to the back here to create a nice halo. So I'm just trying to get a nice color in the perfume liquid. I think that's looking pretty good. Really helps to have some sort of a live preview. Now you could do this tethered to a computer as well, which actually will probably work better, but I don't have access to a computer just here. So I'm just using the back of the LCD screen of the camera as well as in the app which gives me a preview of all the shots. So I think we've got some amazing shots in there. Let's get into the computer and put it all together. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and I've gone ahead and selected seven of the best shots from the entire shoot uh, just to ensure that we have a variety of um, lighting situations and different shots that highlight various parts of the bottle. So in this case, we've got some little nice neat little highlights um, on the emblem there. Um, this one here has a highlight on the top and this one has more sort of detail over here. This guy here um, highlights the emblem itself quite well. We've got this one here, which um, highlights the face of the bottle really well. So we're going to use a combination of these images and using things like uh, masking out various parts, we're going to put all of it together into a single shot. So the first thing to do is actually go through the shots and just ensure that your light levels etc are correct. So this is a, an edited shot. If I reset this, you'll see the entire shot uh, is much brighter than what it was before and we have some missing details in the whites here the whites have been blown out as you can see so what i did was i actually just um, reduced the highlights down a little bit just so we get a little more color back into the space of the bottle this guy here again if i reset this you'll see the emblem itself is blown out so i'm gonna Again, just reduce the highlights down till I don't see any loss of details. It is very close to white here, um, the color here, but we can adjust that in Photoshop by adding some uh, saturation or rather recolor this area. These guys will just use as is. Now you will notice that strangely, if I scroll through these shots, the position of the shots has changed for whatever reason. Could be because I knocked over the tripod a little bit, perhaps while I was moving around it. So we'll need to align these in Photoshop together. 
So the way to do that would be to select all of these, right click, and then edit in Photoshop and open as layers. So the automated script in Photoshop will just load these into separate layers. Okay, so Photoshop has finished uh, loading all these images into different layers. Now this is the base image I want to start with. So I'm going to take this guy and move it all the way to the bottom and just disable the other images. And just so that we can see how we want to build up this image. The first thing to do would be to now let's pick out the um, correct image for the face of the bottle and it happens to be this guy. So I'm going to move this guy down. Um, what I'm going to do is actually change the blend mode of this layer to lighten. And immediately you can see there's a, there's a nice sort of look to this bottle now. However, you'll see that we've not aligned these images properly. So what we need to do first, just to make sure these are aligned correctly, is I'll change this blend mode to difference. So it shows me a difference of the pixels between um, this layer and the one below it. So I'm going to hit Control T on my keyboard. This is the, for the transformation tools. And just using my arrow keys, I'm going to try and align these images to the correct orientation. Okay, and that seems to do the job. So now these images are nicely aligned. In fact, we're missing a bit of alignment there, so let's try to fix that. Okay, so I mean, what we're interested to see is that the face looks good. So for this particular shot, uh, so I'm just going to hit OK there. And we can mask out the rest uh, of the image from this face layer. So this is just adding a bit of light to the face. So to create a mask around this face itself, I'm going to try and use the channel. So I'm going to switch off everything else. So we've got this image, uh, go to the channels. Now let's pick out the channel with the highest contrast. So this one looks pretty good, or rather this one here. So we just want to isolate the isolate the uh, face of the bottle. So I'm going to duplicate this by dragging it to the bottom. And now we have this guy here. So let's uh, hit Control L to bring up the levels. And I'm going to change the levels around here just to brighten up just the face here. Now, never mind these areas here, we can always use the brush tool to mask those away. This looks okay. Let's hit okay here. And I'm gonna hold down control on my keyboard and click on the thumbnail here, and that makes a selection. So switch back to RGB, back in the layers, and we're going to add a mask. So this is done. Um, it's basically hidden everything but these what we selected. So if I turn this on and off, you see all these areas here. So we need to try and eliminate those. So, so hit Alt, hold down Alt and click on the mask thumbnail and it shows you the, the uh, preview of the mask. I'm going to hit B for my brush tool and with black selected. So you can hit D to go back to, to the default white and black and hit X to toggle between them. So I'm just going to um, make black my foreground. And with the brush sort of nice and big, I'm going to try and get rid of everything but the face because that's, that's all we're interested in. Um, for this particular frame. So let's uh, bring that down. And I might fast forward here just to clean up the mask so you don't have to sit through me <laughs> trying to clean up the mask. Okay, so our mask is done. I have isolated this front here. And we have a few artifacts here, but we will be using the, the other image that I had at the top here, this guy here, to um, replace these bits. 
so but for the entire face itself it's starting to look pretty good now we're gonna try and build up this emblem here so let's bring this guy on top here um, again I'm going to switch to the difference mode the blend mode and hit Control T on my keyboard to try and align this. So let's just zoom in a little bit. Now if I switch back to the lighten mode. So remember, if I just hold down Alt and click on this eye here, we want to try and get this logo or emblem um, out of here. So what we're going to do is create a mask um, for this hold down alt and click this that's looking good now we go off to the channels let's see which particular channel best isolates this so let's uh, red sort of mushes it all together so does green but the blue channel has a nice sort of clear uh, view of this so let's duplicate this just uh, zoom out here again with this particular one let's uh, go control L for the levels and try to brighten up just these bits while darkening the image around it switch back to RGB and in here let's just add a mask okay Let's just re-enable these layers. Okay, so we need to clean up this mask a little bit and just have the emblem isolated. So again, I've held, I held down Alt and clicked on the mask here um, to reveal the mask. And again, I'm going to use my brush tool to just brush away everything but the emblem. So I've got black as my selected uh, brush and I'll just clean up the mask. So one quick way to um, clean up masks is to set your brush blend mode to overlay. Now what that'll do, and if you've got black selected, it'll essentially take any grays and start turning them towards the black. Since this is white, it's not going to touch that. So if I click here, you see it's only done the, the bits inside. I'm just gonna undo that. And over here, you can see I can brush away here and it doesn't even touch any of the white sections. Okay, now switching back to uh, the normal view, so I'll just hold down Alt and I'll click on the mask again. We've got a few artifacts here, so let's have a look at the mask here. Now what I can do is just manually bring those details in. And let's have a look at this mask here. So over here, we need to negate this. So if I look at this guy and this guy, what we need to do is hold down control on this mask here, go here, and it's selected it. Now we want to fill it with black. So with the selection active, just hit control backspace to fill it with the selected background color. So control backspace, and that's filled it with black. Control D to deselect. Let's have a look again. And now we can see we've got a much better view of the, um, of the emblem here. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's have a look at some of the other shots. So this guy here, um, the purpose of this was to add this highlight here. So let's uh, again change the mode to difference here and control T to transform. That's looking pretty good. So let's hit OK there and change the mode to lighten. So that has now added a nice glow um, on this edge. Let's just review that. It also brings in uh, some of this detail here. 
Now the lighten mode basically compares two layers and whichever one's lighter, um, it brings in those pixels. So if I were to compare um, with the previous view, so let's switch this off. You see all of this area is quite dark, but in this image, these pixels are brighter. So when I enable this layer, it's gonna bring in just the lighter bits. It ignores anything at, at the back here, um, simply because these pixels are darker than these pixels. So that's starting to look nice and sharp there. Let's have a look at this fella. Okay, so we can try to align this again. Let's see um, what that does. So again, select the layer, Control T to transform. So, and then switch back the uh, mode to lighten. And if I compare this, you see it really adds this nice shine to the, the logo um, and also the emblem. Is there anything else that it added which we didn't want? And yes, so we already we don't need this detail here and you can you can see I uh, clearly wasn't careful enough and you can see all my grubby fingerprints all over the bottle but that's okay um, we're not going to use that that frame um, so that we retain this sort of color information so let's again create a mask here I'm gonna um, hold down alt to click on this guy and then it creates a negative mask and what we want to do is, well, let's just uh, invert this. So control I to invert. And let's just review what we want to bring in. We just want to bring in details on the face of the bottle and nowhere near um, the rest. Okay. What we can do is now control I to invert. And again, with the mask selected, hit your brush tool, B and with a sort of nice soft brush and with white selected as a color we're gonna bring these details back let's hit x and just get rid of anything extra that i might have added let's review now so that's brought in some nice sort of highlights on the logo it really helps to have nicely aligned layers so you can start building your image immediately. Now I obviously made the mistake of um, knocking over my tripod I believe. Um, no, I actually don't remember when I did that. But uh, the images seem to be not aligned properly. Which is why we have to manually do it here. Okay, let's have a look at the next frame. This one here is all about that highlight there. So let's uh, again see if it's aligned correctly. So hitting the difference mode. And I actually feel that it is aligned correctly. Oh, there's a little bit of a difference here. So what we'll do is again hit Control T and just hit that right there. And I think that should be okay. Now switching back to lighten. Let's see what, what it did. So this has added a bit of detail, I believe, in here. Just on that edge there. Which is quite nice. And also in the this little opening here. So let's keep that. But it does add some weird sort of um, highlights on the Privé logo. So let's try and brush those away. So if I go here, click the mask. Now with my brush tool selected and black as the foreground color, I'm just gonna brush away anything from this logo and maybe um, away from this front here, just so that we retain those details. We don't want to add extra light where it's probably not needed and doesn't add value. So that's looking pretty good. Does it make a difference if I take this out? 
one that does makes the, um, the million um, thing look a bit better. And maybe over here as well. I'm just gonna So this serial number that you see, we probably will get rid of it at the end of it. Um, let's have a look at what this is. Okay. So this particular layer added a nice highlight here, over here, and also some color for the cap there, which is always appreciated. It does, I think, highlight some of my fingerprints here, which is more work for us So to get rid of. So let's try and Let's just review. Yeah, so let's get rid of these. Okay. Anything else? It adds a bit of color on the wood, which is appreciated. There you go, that's looking pretty good. Okay. Okay, so that's already starting to look really, really nice. Um, we've got a nice sharp image of the bottle itself. So what we can do now is try and get rid of some of these smudges and um, little dust particles, I believe, dust particles here. So let's do that. So let's try and let's try to do this using the spot healing brush. So what I'm going to do is create a new layer on top of everything. I'm going to select my spot healing brush, which is this guy here, spot healing. And with the content aware selected and sample all layers at the top here, we want to sample everything below this particular layer where we're going to add the, um, add the corrections. So with a nice soft brown brush, I'm going to try and paint these guys away. And that's looking good. So I'm going to take a little bit of time here to just um, spot heal some of these dust fibers and some of the smudges. Okay, so to get rid of some of the smudge marks or the, or the fingerprints over here, I'm going to try and use the surface blur tool. And now for that to happen, you need to create a new layer, um, which is a stamp visible layer. So if I select the top one here and go control, alt, shift and E, that creates a stamp visible layer. So it's basically a copy. If I isolate this layer, you'll see it's got all the changes that we've made into one layer. Um, and to do that, now we need to go into filter. Let's convert it for smart filters so that any filters that we apply to this are, um, you know, it's, it, it's applied in a non-destructive way. We go filter, blur, surface blur. Now we want to focus just on this area here. So if I zoom in and try to just play with these threshold and radius sliders. Let's bring that down so we see a little bit of the detail coming back. So we want to try and get a combination of the radius and threshold where those smudge marks sort of disappear. And to me, that looks pretty good. So let's hit OK there. Now, obviously, we want to just isolated to that bit there. So let's select this layer and create an inverted mask. So Alt, um, hold down Alt and then click on the mask icon. So that's created a negative mask. And we just want to brush in this area. So let's hit D uh, to set our color to default, black and white. Brush, uh, B for brush. And just brush in this here. just on the side here. And that's taken care of the, of the fingerprints, my grubby fingerprints. <laughs> okay, 
So that's looking pretty good. Now we could go ahead and refine uh, more of this bottle and try to get rid of these smudge marks from the front. But I think I'll stop right there for this particular video. So I've just noticed that the emblem itself still looks pretty bright. So let's see uh, which particular image it was that we brought the emblem back. So it's this guy here. What we're gonna do is create a curves adjustment layer right on top of that and click on this button here, which will basically clip it to this particular layer below it. And just try to reduce the reduce the um, brightness a little bit wonder what we can do and that's just adding a bit more contrast to that logo the other thing i want to do is add a bit of color to it so let's again click on this um, add a new adjustment which is the hue saturation adjustment again clipping it down so these two layers now affect only um, this layer here with the emblem. I'm gonna hit colorize on this and now we just change the hue around, bring the lightness down a little bit and maybe add the saturation. Add a little bit of saturation and then play around with the hue and try to match the original color. So for me, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna bump up the saturation all the way let's see what that does and that is starting to look really really good now and even bring down the lightness just a tad i'll just play around with the lightness here to make sure that we have the correct sort of color coming through and that is starting to look pretty neat so what i want to do is add a bit of color to the background which is uh, really sort of boring gray here so to do that first of all we need to isolate the background bit so if i again select this layer let's just un unselect all of these layers so that we have this in view go to our channels and with the with the channel with the most contrast which i think appears to be the blue channel so let's copy that and with our levels adjustment so again Clicking that and going Control L. We're gonna try and play around with these sliders here so that we have just the background bit applied. Hold down Control to select the mask. Let's go back to RGB and then select a hue and saturation layer and it's already applied the mask to it. So if I hold that down, it's applied the mask to the hue saturation layer, which is great. Now we want to clip it obviously to the bottom layer. So let's hold down Alt and just hover your mouse between the two layers and you'll see this icon pop up. So, and you can clip it to the layer below. Now we want to clean up this mask again. We don't want, we just want to clean outline of the bottle. So I'm going to hit B for my brush. Um, I've set it to white as the color. So I'm just going to brush all of this away. Okay, so we have a nice clean selection around the background. Let's re-enable our layers. And now in our hue saturation, Let's double click this icon. Let's see if we can colorize this to something a bit more appropriate to the bottle. You can spend hours trying to tweak these images. Um, I'm trying to be very, very quick here. Now the next thing we want to do is get rid of the serial number. So what we can do here simply is use a stamp um, a clone stamp. The co so what we can do is use the clone stamp tool. So I hit S for the clone stamp. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger like that. Hold down Alt to take a sample and then just sort of, oops. Again, we need to hit, uh, we need to select the current and below 
option. So let's hold on Alt, select the sample and just try to brush away the serial number. Now it's already started replicating everything. So let's hold Alt and brush this away. So now we're left with a nice clean image of the uh, bottle itself. Okay, so with those fixes done, let's jump back into Lightroom. I'm just gonna hit reset here again. And so it's gone back to the original image. And let's try to make those changes again. So we've got our highlight priority bringing it down. Sorry, the post crop vignetting. I'm gonna bring the midpoint in as well. So it looks really good. Let's feather it a little bit just to add a bit more of a subtle effect. And that's not making any difference. We can go to the tone curve and just play with these sliders here. Let's double click to reset. Just gonna play it by ear here at a time. Let's go to basic and just play with the vibrance here. So that's looking nice and vibrant. Try and add a highlight point here. So let's hit invert. I'm going to try and highlight the side of the bottle just a little bit. So let's choose exposure. It's already selected. And let's bring up the exposure just a little bit. Maybe the contrast as well. There we go. And switching back to fit. Now we want to just try and highlight the liquid here a little bit. So let's switch to the adjustment brush tool. And with the uh, current selection, that's fine. I'm just gonna try and get some color into the liquid. So as you can see, if I crank these up, it's sort of spilling outside of the, of the bottle. So I'm gonna hit Alt and just brush away some of the areas that I don't want it to affect. So let's bring them, bring the highlights back a little bit. Exposure is quite high, so let's bring that. Let's bring the clarity down a little bit. Maybe bring the texture down, so that should help to get rid of those fingerprint marks as well, if any. And that is looking pretty good. So here's the before, as we got it from Photoshop, and here's the after. Thank you guys for joining me on another video. I hope you picked up some tips and learned something new along the way. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell.